All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Just a reminder, uh, starting on Monday, uh, 7.30 in the morning, I'm going to close the door. I'm going to put a little sign of a reminder. Uh, so that way, if you're running late, that's fine. Don't, don't run red lights. Don't stress. Just hang out by the door. In the middle of my first break, I'll let you in. Not a big deal. Um, but once again, the way I teach, not just reading off of bullets, I do analogies and I tell stories and I try to make it fun and interesting. Good morning. morning. So this is going to be the last day of your first week grace period. Uh, on Monday, uh, we're going to do things the way I do things. shallows we're still kind of getting our toes uh, used to the temperature of the water all right so we rotate to translate which was an emphasis in Wednesday lecture but I wanted to give you a few examples of how and why I call them functional circles now why circles well most everything your body is somewhat circular wrist joint circular 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 heck when you do a cartwheel you do a circle right so you kind of have this, you know, you got to use your imagination a little bit, but like this bubble around you. And you can like reach out as far as you can to one side and another side and kind of do this arcing bubble of function. Now, of course, anybody seen that game where like people roll in those bubbles and they just collide with each other? It's super cool and want to do it. So you can move your bubble, but in reality, you have like this function where your hands can work and grab and catch and throw in this bubble and everything you do inside of it kind of has to be inside of it. So you have to be able to have function inside your functional circle of bubble and that doesn't always mean go out as far as you can. Sometimes that means to cancel out so that you can either work or seek. I give an example. Where are my uh, football players at? High school, college? Thank you for respecting my time. I appreciate that. Uh, what about who's a fan of football? Okay, football season about to start. Big fan. Who has a fantasy football team? Who has multiple fantasy football teams? All right. I appreciate the honesty. All of you guys have multiple fantasy football teams. I know it. So guys, think about this. Gorillas, when they want to look to the right or the left, they have to literally move like their entire trunk, okay? Because their heads can't swivel. But for us, let's say I want to keep my eyes on something, but I need to reposition my entire body in order to run or reposition my circle, but I want to stay looking at something. If I didn't rotate my neck, this is what would happen. In order to stay looking at something, I have to twist my neck, but it may not look like it because I keep my eyes on it and you don't see the traditional way of moving your neck. Okay? Same thing can happen with your hands. If, if you were uh, reaching out or you were working, you were typing, you were playing, and your whole body, you had to go and reach for something else, you could actually stay functioning while your whole body repositions itself. So we rotate to translate, yes, but we also rotate to maintain a fixed position of certain parts of our body. Okay, make sense? It's those kinds of adaptations that, that, that are illusionary, where it may not look like my shoulder moved, but my shoulder did move. If my shoulder did move, it would actually have looked like this. From here to there is the exact same thing as from here to there. From here to there is the exact same thing as from here to there. Okay? Now, let's play around with rules. We've got to have rules. Every game has rules. And I know that you were introduced to concepts of planes and axes. We're going to develop them in here. I'm going to actually make them make sense. It's so fast and loose. It's so easy to get confused because 
Planes and axes in our world of human movement involve rotations, involve spins. But planes and axes, good morning. Good morning. Just a reminder, Monday I'm gonna start locking the door, okay? Awesome. So in medical, like uh, MRI views and x-rays, you have like sagittal views, frontal views, transverse views. And that's different. How you see something is different than how something is spinning, okay? We kind of hinted upon this on Wednesday. So I'm gonna explain the difference between those, those concepts and then get into the meat and potatoes, which is spin, planes and axes of spin, okay? So, on, the, on your, your textbook or your, your uh, unit one materials, notice we try to color coordinate things. And I'm gonna try to make them make sense right now. So you're playing any game, uh, cards, board game, not B-O-R-E-D-B-O-A-R-D. You gotta have rules, except Monopoly. Apparently, like, it's the Wild West. Like, it's house rules every time, okay? But you have to have rules so that everybody can make sense of what's happening, okay? So in human movement, we have to set up rules. At, at Auburn, uh, Dr. Weimer, my major professor, she used to say, define your axes, define your axes, define your axes, when we would talk about graphing things. And the importance of that at the time, I, don't know, I didn't, maybe I was a first year doc student, I didn't understand. But it was understood because we have to set the rules. We have to all be able to agree on what we're seeing so that we could all agree on what we're talking about. Okay? So the rules. So what we know about dimensions, three dimensions of straight line motion. We have the X, we have the Y, and we have the Z. And not only that, you can move two different ways in the X, Y, Z. Positive X, negative X. Positive Y, negative Y. Positive Z, negative Z. Let's think about what we already kind of know or familiar with. You have roads in two dimensions. Why don't we have roads in three dimensions? Because we don't really go up and down. Well, I take that back. We do go up and down when we go like on a ramp or a <laughs> over a bypass, right? We go, we go in the third dimension, okay? So let's think about what, what those concepts of straight lines mean for this class. Our bilateral axis, a fixed point about which we're gonna have something spin. Bilateral just means two sides, bilateral. Well, what are the two sides of class? My left side and my right side. So our bilateral axis, let me see what color we use, the red. The bilateral axis is gonna be a fixed point. What did it do? Oh. <laughs> I feel like a chipmunk hiding. So the bilateral, our bilateral axis is gonna be a fixed point, an axis, X, Y, Z, that's gonna go from right and left side of class. Because this is the right and left side of class for everybody. Make sense? Just like this is the front of class for everybody, the back of class for everybody, the top of class for everybody, the bottom of class for everybody. These are the sides of class for everybody. So this would be our class's bilateral axis. Now, objects rotate about an axis. So how would any object rotate about a bilateral axis? It would rotate this way. I'm gonna give it a name. But note, it can't spin like this, and it can't spin like that. It has to spin perpendicular to that axis. It has to. chasing butterflies up here, okay? So just be patient, and I'll go to the door uh, when I have a break in the analysis. Now I kind of have to start over. All right.
Let's start from the beginning. The earth cooled. Then we had dinosaurs. <laughs> so, bilateral axis. Objects rotate in what we call a sagittal plane of spin, a sagittal dimension of spin. Three dimensions don't just work for straight line world. Three dimensions work for rotating world as well. Angular world, as we call it. Put it this way. You guys know who my man, Sir Isaac Newton, is, and you know that he has like these three laws. He never called them that, but he has these three laws. All you've ever been introduced to is those laws in straight line world. Inertia is equal to MA and action reaction. But those laws can apply to rotational world too. Moment of inertia, uh, the sum of all the moments or torques is equal to the mass moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. The point is, is that three dimensions also applies to spinning bodies. So I'll keep it simple, okay? For an object to spin, though, it has to spin about something. Bilateral axes, sagittal plane spin, you gotta call it something. My mom and dad had to name me something. Bilateral axis, sagittal plane spin, huh? Now watch, here's where I try to make things fit. Bilateral axis, sagittal plane spin. Cool. There's not one bilateral axis that represents everything. There's technically infinitely many fixed points that go from left to right or right to left. So our bilateral axis could be any place about which rotation that occurs in that sagittal plane. Yes, ma'am? Would you consider um, all joints axes? Ooh. No. But, but that's just the way you phrased it, which is an amazing question. All <coughs> diarthritic movable joints have axes, but you have some articulations in your body that don't, like your, uh, the, 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 the bones in your skull are fused, right? So, so they're technically joints, but they don't go anywhere, right? So, so there's like, a, it's kind of one of those like trick questions, right? Not all joints have axes because not all joints allow for movement. Cool? But if it rotates, it has to rotate about something. Good? So sagittal plane spin. Now, that's different than a sagittal plane view. Very important. So think, think of this concept like this. If, if I was going to analyze somebody's movement, whether that's as their personal trainer, their coach, trying to work on their mechanics, and I knew that they were going to have sagittal plane movement, I wouldn't want to watch it from the front. I wouldn't want to watch it from the top. I'd want to watch it from the view of the axis itself, because that's what's going to give me the best view of all the things that are happening with the spin. Does that make sense? So when someone says a sagittal or moving in the sagittal plane, it's not about straight line stuff. It's about the spin or about how you would want to be watching the spin. <coughs> Bless you. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, what's your question? Oh, so you said that the sagittal plane view is different from the sagittal plane Cor Correct. So sagittal, think of it like this. If you were going to watch something spin in the sagittal plane, mm -hmm. you would want to watch it from the view of the axis. You'd want to watch it from the side. You'd want, to, you'd want to see the spin happening from the view of the axis. So a lot of times for MRI scans, x-rays, 
they'll say sagittal, like for a slice, but obviously there's no spinning, there's, no, there's nothing spinning, but the point is, is that that's how you would want to view the movie screen of anything that's happening in the sagittal plane. Better? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain why sometimes rotational dimensions of planes get confused with no movement views of planes. And that gets confusing a lot. But not in this class. Not with you guys. All right, let's keep going down the road. Side to side of class. You know what else we have? We have the front and the back of class. The front and the back. We have a name for that for our axes, the anterior posterior. That's what that means. AP axis. That's what AP means, anterior to posterior. So if we have, let me see, we've got blue. Let's do the blue. So if we have an axis or a fixed point that's going from the front to the back, how is something going to spin about it? Perpendicular? It can't spin like this. Can't spin like this. It's got to spin like this. So the name for that specific dimension of spin about the anterior posterior axis is frontal plane rotation. Objects can rotate in a frontal plane when they're rotating about an anterior posterior axis. Listen to that verbiage again, you guys. Objects rotate in planes, but objects rotate about an axis. Very, very important. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to come back. That's okay. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Sure, sure. The reason, and, and, and please know you're not alone. The reason is because your brain, just like my brain, is so used to wanting to see things in straight line world. So we want to say, oh, my foot is going forward. Why isn't that anterior posterior? Okay. So let me give you a, a few examples of why, why we can't necessarily do that. Okay. I extend my knee, my foot goes forward. Unless I extend my knee and my foot goes up. Unless I extend my knee and my foot goes back. <laughs> Unless I extend my knee and my foot goes to the side. Right? So going forward and back is a coincidence. But what's not a coincidence is the spin. And, and keep in mind, and I know guys this is a lot, and that's okay. If we're looking at, I'm gonna number these, one and two. And if anybody wants to see this, please let me know, because I know there's other people that have the same confusion, because I said teaching since 06, and it's okay. If I rotate this paper, it's a, it's a function of a simple machine. If I rotate it like this, you see this as clockwise, right? Notice how the one goes up and the two goes down. So I can't communicate movement linearly because one goes up and two goes down, but they're both spinning the same because it's all about the spin. So the linearity, anybody want to see that? Okay, so what we just talked about is if I'm rotating, good morning, can these 310? 310? Okay, just want to make sure. If I rotate this paper clockwise, notice how the two goes down and the one goes up. But the rotation stays the same. The spin is the same, but the linear one goes up. Well, now one goes to your right. Now one goes down. Now one goes to your left. Now one goes up. The linearity is going to constantly change, and that's why Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, alcohol tolerances of all levels, we communicate joint motions on their rotations. 
not on their linearity. That's why we say abduction is a rotation, not away from a midline. Because guess what? If I keep spinning, it's going to come back to the midline. Cool? So it has the answer to your question. It's a great question. It's because sagittal plane and frontal plane and eventually transverse plane has nothing to do with where is it going. It's how is it spinning. Awesome. Great, great question. So are we cool with anterior, posterior? And objects are going to rotate in a frontal plane. Okay, so let me give you some examples of this with my patented sound effects. Anterior posterior axis, right? Here's a tricky one. Sagittal for my for my trunk would have been cool. So far so good, or so far so bad. All right, let's get to our third one. Oh no, I used the wrong color. Right. Everything I just did, pretend it was blue. Okay. Let's see. The green. Now we get to the green. Side to side, bilateral, front to back, anterior, posterior, top to bottom. We call top to bottom a polar axis. North pole to south pole. North to south, top to bottom. Polar axis. Some textbooks call it a longitudinal axis. That's okay. It's the same concept. But we need to call it the same name so that we know what we're talking about. So we're going to call it a polar axis. And objects rotate in a transverse plane about a polar axis. Can't do this. Can't do that. Can't go frontal. Can't go sagittal. You have to go transverse. Okay? Let's do my, my little paper propeller. Okay. Yay. Now, the one two example, I love I actually kind of dig the one two example. Just like how we did the one goes down, two goes up. It'd be the same thing. One goes forward while the two goes back. But they're both spinning in the same direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. So it's not about back or forward. It's about the spin. It's all about the spin. Okay? It's the spin. Transverse spin. So examples of transverse spin in our body would be stuff like this. I'm going to flex my elbow just because it makes it easier to show you. Yeah, there's one too, right? I don't know if I could balance the thing, but right, do this. Uh, that's talent. There's going to be some harder ones when we get into like the knee, and the knee can rotate when the knee is flexed. So there's going to be like some harder ones, but that's okay. We need to know the rules. We need to know the possibilities. We need to know our planes and axes so that we can do something with them <laughs> going forward. Yes, ma'am? If you were to move your arm like this, would that be considered that action? Wow, I love your verbiage. If we moved our arm like this, would it be considered that? No, it's okay. I love it. I love it. That's kind of how I talk at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I'm going to answer your question like I think your question is. Just correct me if I'm off, OK? So what would this kind of motion be in terms of a plane? This would be transverse, right? Anter not anterior, posterior, that'd be here. Not bilateral, that would be here, top to bottom, right? Yeah. Good. Think of it like this. Where are my physical educators at? 
Be physical educators? Okay, awesome. What about my occupational therapists who want to work with kids? Outstanding. Okay. Congratulations, y'all all going straight to heaven. Okay. <laughs> Working with kids, man, that's tough. Because you get the added bonus of having to work with their parents or their guardians. Multiple layers here. That's why I don't teach K through 12. My mom and dad did that for 30 years. I'm good. It's tough. Think of it like this. If you were going to ask a child to spin their whole body, we already have, we, it, it's simple words we already know. Hey, do a front roll or a back roll, right? Now, linearly, the spin, it doesn't matter front to back. It's how they're spinning their body, right? So wouldn't a front roll or a back roll be sagittal spin of their entire body? So in other words, like if they had like a, um, if, this is silly, but if they had like a belt and they had like, um, let's see, what did I use for bilateral? They had, they had a belt and they had like two red markers on the side. They would do a front roll and a back roll like it would be about the bilateral axis, right? Now, I don't have to roll. I could actually do a backflip right here, right now. But my lawyer said, you know, hey, probably not you know, a good idea. I may hurt myself, so I'm not. But I, I could, oh yeah, I, 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 I could if I, felt, if I felt like it. But wouldn't that be sagittal? Like their whole body, right? What would be our frontal? We were talking to a kid and we said, and in your mind, you're like, I want to see that kid spin their whole body in the frontal plane. What would we ask the kid to do? It's a common, it's a common skill. Oh, correct. But I want, to, I want their whole body to spin. A cartwheel, yeah. You're right about jumping jacks being in the frontal plane. But if I want their whole body to spin, we do a cartwheel, right? And notice... Even though we say like cartwheel to the right and to the left, we give these linear names to it. All that's really saying is spin counterclockwise or spin clockwise. That's all it is. Because remember with general motion, the tire is going to spin and go somewhere usually. Rotation and translation, but they're two totally separate things. And then, if we wanted a kid to spin their whole body in the transverse plane, we would just say something like, spin to your right or spin to your left. That's all three planes right there. Sagittal, frontal, and transverse. Okay. I think it is extremely important, so important over the weekend, a uh, flash car, quiz, you have to get your planes and axes, and, and the best part about it is they're married, like, and they're, the divorce rate is zero. <coughs> AP, frontal plane rotation. Bilateral, sagittal plane rotation. Polar, transverse plane rotation. Okay. Guys, y'all have such great questions. Please keep them coming. There are some examples of what we just talked about, right? Who watched the Ahsoka series? Anybody Star Wars fans out there? Yeah. So that's like where Sabine got like, Psh. oh, sorry, spoilers. I mean, spoilers. Are... You ever had somebody fuss at you for spoilers when the movie's been out like for a decade? And I'm like, so in Titanic, you know, when the ship sinks, bruh! <laughs> spoilers, man. I'm like, Titanic? Okay, my bad. Imagine somebody fussing at a, t a history teacher for giving away spoilers, like from a textbook. I think that's hysterical. All right, any questions about this diagram? I like this, guys, because this separates everything. Most of the time, you see these planes and axes kind of all combined, right? You know, it looks like the guy is like with all these different things, and it doesn't really make sense. And so what I need you guys to really understand is that those like, um, like, like those slices, that would be like the view, right? Like, like the sagittal view, the frontal view, the transverse view. But to actually have movement, sagittal, frontal, transverse, we, we have to spin. It has to spin. And it makes sense that on a textbook you can't really make, <laughs> make things move, right? 
I want to, I want to do a textbook that is like a flip book, where like they have like that guy and like, like <laughs> you flip it and he spins. We have to give it spin. So like if, if, if he was doing our front flip, back flip, front roll, back roll, that's the axis he would do it about. If he was doing the cartwheel or the jumping jacks, it'd be here. And if he was spinning, it'd be like that, right? So we have to give it spin. Planes rotate in planes, okay? And objects rotate in planes. Our joints are gonna rotate in planes. Objects rotate about axes. Our joints rotate about axes. So here's a check for understanding. What plane am I moving in? Exactly. So I'm not moving in a plane, right? A tricky, tricky question that's coming on your test. Remember, I play cards with, I play poker with my cards out. This is coming. If I shift, and this is going to be a really good understanding question for the one you asked earlier about the shifts or the, the fronts to the backs. If I took this chair and slid it forward and back, what plane did that chair move in? Okay, I have team frontal, I have team sagittal. Before you guys were born, there was this movie called Twilight, and it was like Team Jacob and Team Edward, like that kind of stuff. So you can see how it's not, it's not obvious. Some people are saying sagittal, some people are saying frontal. Why not transverse? Right? It's kind of moving. And the answer is, is because this chair isn't moving in any plane because it's not spinning. Um, yeah. Now, if I, yeah, I'd rather, I'd, I'd rather us miss it now when it doesn't count. If I did this sagittal, if I did this frontal, and if I did this transverse. But think about it, if I slid it forward, we have a name for that. Positive Z or positive X or negative Y. In fact, it's moving parallel with, with, the, with, the, with what you see as sagittal and frontal and transverse. Like it, you know, we, we have names for straight line movement. <laughs> Front, back, left, right, positive X, negative X. We have names for that. We need communication of spin. Because when things spin, you have this goes front, this goes back. So we can't use front, back when things are spinning. We have to have rotational dimensions. Would it be safe to say that like? It's never safe with me. Okay. I'm joking. Go ahead. Well, like, if, it, if it's rotating, does it have to be moving in a plane? So like, no matter what, if it's rotating, it's moving in a plane. But if it's not rotating, Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Objects rotate in planes. Objects do not translate in planes. Okay, so you can't say that was moving in the sagittal plane because it was translating. That is correct. So would you just say it's translating about? Yeah, we would just say it's going, it's moving to the back of class. It's okay. moving in the positive Z. Like we have okay. linear terms to communicate. It's going north. It's going south, it's going northeast. Like we have terms for straight line movement explanation. So whenever you're talking about a plane, it's rotation. So I think okay. Absolutely. And that's how our bodies move. Because remember, we rotate to translate. It's impossible. Well, it's impossible. You would have to dislocate something. But I can't just take my wrist and move it in a straight line. Make sense? In order to keep the bones articulating, I can't just shift things. I have to spin things. You guys are so fun. Okay, here we go. Sagittal frontal transverse. Here's a different uh, view of it. Because I thought it was important, different learners might, like in other words, some of you may get this. That's cool. Some of you may get this. That's awesome. Okay. All right. Here is what I did here, just in case if you wanted uh, that little experiment again. I used to, uh, 
if you print out your materials, be careful because if you lay it down, that won't match up. In other words, it was meant to be viewed here. I'll give you an example, okay? Left to right, right to left, front to back. But if I take this and do this, <laughs> now that's top to bottom. Does that make sense? So with less and less people printing out materials, I thought I would put it as if you were reading it on your computer. If you do have printed materials, that's okay. Just make sure you make a note. Just make sure you make a note to read it just like that. So like, like when you're studying, you get a read like that. Outstanding. Cool. Look at these like very expensive props that I go out and purchase with my own money. All right, this is um, a summary of what I was saying with uh, views. So like, um, if you were watching, I say if you were watching, but if you were scoring a gymnast, well, I guess too, like. Let me, get, let me give some, some better examples. Um, oh, here's one. The most expensive seats for a football game is usually on the 50 yard line because you have the best view of what's happening. The lesser seats are in the end zones. That's all, that's all we're saying here. Is that a, if I'm trying to see what's happening on the side of the foot, I don't want a front view of the foot, okay? So they'll use planar verbiage to talk about views, not movement. There's never any movement on an x-ray. <laughs> there's, there's never any movement on an MRI, okay? So what's happening is it, my, I wasn't around when they named these things, but I would have named it a bilateral view because <laughs> it's from the side. I would have named it an anterior view because it's from the front. But that's not what happened. They say a sagittal view, a frontal view, or a transverse view. So I think the easiest way to not confuse those things is one, it's not moving, and two, it's Looking, how would I want to see movement if it happened? And the best way to see it is from the axes perspective. Because you're going to get to see the whole movie perpendicular to where the movement's at. Okay. So again, if I was trying to watch a gymnast and score his or her score, I wouldn't, if I was a judge, I wouldn't want to watch it from the front. I'd want to watch it from the side. Where is that axis? Look, you see the axis, that bar. That axis is right there, so that way I can see the spin better, right? So that would be an example of like a, a frontal view. I know, I didn't name these things. For this class though, guys, it's not gonna be fixed. You're gonna be moving, we're gonna be moving, there's a movement class. The, in my opinion, I'm very biased, the most important class you're gonna have in kinesiology, because that's what kinesiology means. And not only that, every person here from left to right, front to back, <laughs> top to bottom, because some people are sitting higher and some people are sitting low. Every application of your eventual job is gonna deal with humans that move. And you know what else is cool? Sometimes these humans can't move, so we have occupations that help them move. I have several students that go into prosthetics and orthotics. Lieutenant Dan, you have legs. Do you remember that from Forrest Gump? Yeah, we can do that now, man. We can make, you know, we can make people move. That's so cool. I remember 20 years ago, and I'll open it up for uh, questions, but I, I just want to share this story. 20, it was 20, 25 years ago. It's a long time ago. I was at a conference, and they said in the future, um, a bride or a groom is going to be able to walk down the aisle even if they are paralyzed because we will have like these 
of biomechanical ambulatory legs that will be able to move for them. And I was just like, that's amazing. And sure enough, man, we're starting to see those things. Super cool, okay? So it all comes down to movement. Now, movements can be tricky. Movements have illusions to them. And that's why I'm here, is to help work us through, not the simple things, guys. Flexion right, is the harder stuff. It's how, I'll give you an example, it's how this is right knee external rotation, okay? But you know what else is right knee external rotation? This. This is left hip external rotation. You know what else is left hip external rotation? This. This is left hip internal rotation. But you know how many people want to say external? A lot. It's okay. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to work through these things with you. But before we play the game, we've got to know the rules of the game. Planes, axes. On Monday, I'm going to teach you about perspective. Who's satchel? Who's frontal? What I mean by that is, if I do this, and I say, what plane, you guys are like, easy, sagittal. You guys are looking at me like, dude, that looks frontal to me, <laughs> right? And so I'm going to teach you whose perspective wins out. It's from the person you're analyzing, and it's from your joint's perspective, okay? That's why flexion extension will always be flexion extension. This is an ab and adduction of my elbow. This is always going to be flexion and extension of my elbow because as my elbow moves, so doth its plane and axes. This will always be my elbow's bilateral axis, and thus my elbow will always move in its sagittal plane. Cool? We're going to get there next week. Any questions? Great question, great question, great question, great question. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So you were saying, like, this is sagittal. Now, if I rotate out this way, yeah. and I move it like this, yeah. is that still considered sagittal or not? Well, that's why we're going to have to be, that's why we're going to have to say perspective. I'm going to teach you that next week. Okay. What we have depending to do, on where or depending on whose opinion. Oh, so okay. if, you, if anybody's ever had a disagreement with, with a family member or a significant other, you each had a different view of how that <laughs> argument went, right? And so what I'm going to teach you is that this is your elbow sagittal, but it's the room's frontal. Okay. It's the elbow sagittal, but it's your vision's frontal. And that's okay, because I communicated who saw what. But all joint motions is from the joint's perspective, because they're moving. In the room's frontal, but not its frontal. Oh, it can move in the frontal, but you'd have to like, <laughs> have to have we call that in science a bad day. Bad, bad, bad day. Sometimes, when people, sometimes people may fall on their hand and their elbow will move in the frontal plane and they'll sprain or dislocate. Yeah. But it's not supposed to move in the frontal. Oh, okay. It's not supposed to move in its frontal. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Cool, we're gonna work through it. We're going to work through it. Yes, ma'am. Um, like That's okay. Would you say that one more time? I'll chase what I want. Like picking up the body part and then doing all three sequences. Yeah, sure. I'll tell you what, let, let me do shoulder because it can move in all three. Cool? Can I work how this is going to say? Guys, I, yes. <laughs> yes. My intent is to educate, and so if this helps you, it helps me. Let me go back to our color coordinates. Okay, first one we'll do is the bilateral blue. Ooh, I like that, bilateral blue. Sagittal plane of the shoulder, about a bilateral axis at the shoulder, cool? It's rotating in the sagittal plane, it's rotating about its bilateral axis. Cool? Okay. Let's see. Let's go red. I can't 
I can't keep track of anything, you guys. It's a real problem. That's all right. Anterior posterior axis, anterior posterior axis, frontal plane rotation of my shoulder. The shoulder is rotating in the frontal plane. It's rotating about an anterior posterior axis. Specifically, the shoulder is rotating in its frontal plane, and it's rotating about its anterior posterior axis, or AP for short. Cool? Now, to see it better, because technically transverse is going to look like this, and it's, a, it's hard to differentiate radial ulnar joint from shoulder, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flex my elbow, but that's not going to have any effect to the actual ball of the humerus moving about the socket, the glenoid fossa, okay? Transverse plane rotation about a polar axis. There we go. Now next week, we're going to talk about why this is the same for the shoulder as this. It's the same movements for the shoulder. It's in a different plane for the room, but the shoulder don't care about the room. <laughs> the shoulder just cares about the shoulder. So this would be external, internal, 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 external. Cool? All right, you guys, you have a good weekend.